fine. No worries. So I just open up the, um, launch the stream, so we should start seeing people filter in. We'll probably go live about 4.01-ish, depending if we get some people coming in or not. Groovy. Groovy, man. Hello, people in the chat room showing up. Say hello, so I know the chat room works. Oh my goodness, here we go. People starting to filter in. Lovely, lovely. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to go live here in a couple of minutes. Just give a bit of time for people to filter on in. I'm super pumped about this uh, this show. We've got a man of uh, a man of style, a man of exquisite taste in sports franchises, and we're going to be talking to him about one of the craziest, quirkiest movies that has ever been. Hello, Maria. Hello, Allison, Terry, Carol, Shannon. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I believe a real girl herself will be in the chat room as well today. So, and we will at some point open up questions to this uh, awesome, awesome cat. I say cat because I was born in the 40s and I grew up in the early 60s, you guys. You know, I'm a hep cat. It's the way it goes. It's the weekend. I have had a very crazy week. <laughs> so it is time to uh, have a scotch, relax. And of course, we will be shipping copies of The Gangster all weekend long. But it's still the weekend to me. We're still done. Hello, Rob Otto. Welcome. Kraken's 26A6. The championship season. That's people rolling garbage cans around outside. I live in the hood. The hood of La Jolla Village. We know we're going to go camera live as soon as we get to 4 o'clock. Got a pretty good house lined up today. All right, guys. Let's get into this in a minute. Let us go to, let's go early. Why not? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Monster of the Week. Yet another super fun monster to discuss with a super interesting guest. We've got great stuff going on. But before we get to today's guest, I would like to go and tell you what is coming up. Upcoming guests on this awesome show. Next week, actor Bronson Pinchot is going to be talking about The Wicked Witch of the West. Of course, Bronson was the audiobook narrator for my novel Aliens Phalanx. And he absolutely slapped it up, flipped it, rubbed it down. Oh, yes. And then the week after that, Grammar Girl herself is going to be on the show. <laughs> I got to talk to her. She still hasn't figured out what monster she wants to do. She's like, I don't, I don't read a lot of monster fiction. I'm sure you've read all the books in the world. I'm sure we can find something. And then the week after that, author Bonnie Burton is going to be on. She has chosen the killer clowns from outer space. Although I did spell misspell from. Don't worry about it. Misspelling apparently is the thing that's going around this week. Um, that is going to be a blast. That is a crazy movie. If you've never seen that movie, I highly suggest you watch it. Uh, you can be high as possible watching it, and it will actually help. It's a very, very strange, strange movie. And then on October 15th, author Mallory O'Meara is going to be talking about the creature from the Black Lagoon, just in time for a new book of hers that is about, well, the creature of the Black Lagoon. So we're doing all that. You guys may be wondering, why am I wearing a lion's head? I've never worn a lion's head in this show because we are dealing with a fellow Michigander. Lucky Yates is an American actor, voice actor, puppeteer, and comedian. He is known for his vo voice roles as Dr. Krieger and Archer and the Exticles on Frisky Dingo. He was also a recurring actor on the Food Network series Good Eats. He studied theater at Wayne State University, which is in Michigan in D-Town, and regularly performs at Dad's Garage in Atlanta, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Yucky, Lucky. Not ah, Lucky, you did it. Lucky Yucky Yates. Lates. That's what everybody does. It's a, it's it's a tongue me, twister. Yucky also, show everybody this hat you're wearing. What is that? Oh, my God. Do we have two Lions fans Come on, man. on the same show? Uh, uh, back, at, back in the days where you could mingle with other people, uh, we would watch our Sunday games at a local sports bar. And there was one other guy that was a Lions fan in there. It was me and him. It was the best. And every year we'd be like, well, we'll be try again next week. It I, was awesome. I actually had a pretty good, we got like 15 expats when I lived in San Francisco. And uh, we would just come in. The guy who owned the bar. Uh, was a Lions fan of Michigander. He would yep. have cases of Fago shipped in, and we would do vodka Fago shots throughout the whole game. Fucking brilliant. Didn't oh even God. matter who won the game. Vodka, rock, and rye is an amazing oh, drink. Oh, yeah. little red pop and vodka. It was, it, was, it was very, very good. All right, so, Lucky, first question. Oops, 
I got to go back Hello. to the main. I screwed this up. You guys, I told Lucky was going to do this. We're going to talk a little bit about Lucky's comic, Lester of the oh, Lesser are we Gods. Do that first we're going to do it right out of the gate. The right out of the gate. And of course, the book I'm pimping this week, the closest Wait, hold one. On, Scott. I yes. need to say hello to the people. All right, let's so say hello never, to the people. I never greeted them. So, hello, fine people that are watching <laughs> and you in the, in the chat room. In the chat feeds, <laughs> chat room. That's so very early. It's AOL. And Straight it was AOL. a place that you quickly learned to avoid because it was full of creeps. <laughs> it was full anyway, of creeps. Anyway, hi, chat feed. I'm sorry for interrupting you, Scott. That's let's, all right. Let's, let's talk go. real quick. Let's talk. What is Lester of the Lesser Gods? Oh, you mean this <laughs> piece of brilliance right here? Yep. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look at that hero. He's got the girth. Look at that hero He's got some girth. The apocalypse. Thunder thighs. Uh, it's uh, myself and Eric Powell and a guy named Matt Cushing and an artist named uh, Gideon Kendall did this one issue. Okay. Um, it is about a uh, sort of a 36-year-old shit upon all his life, mm -hmm. uh, lives with his really horrible mother who got knocked up in the bathroom of a biker bar. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he... He works at a pizza restaurant, and then the apocalypse hits. Satan okay. uh, brings the apocalypse onto the earth, and then Lester finds out that he, uh, the guy that knocked her up in uh, the bathroom, oh, no. was Odin. <laughs> so he is—he's a demigod. He's a bastard son of Odin, and it's the apocalypse. And there's a 36-year-old LARPer, like he's a lifelong like LARP nerd, and like <laughs> speaks the LARP nerds speak like all the time. Has always, you know talk like an idiot uh and so it's a guy that got shit out all his life that then his dream comes true and his uh the baby daddy is odin who was in a biker bar banging it and knocking boots in the bathroom that's yeah, like it's really quite a quite a graphic scene. it's a very adult comic it is. book i should point out he once got busy in a biker bar bathroom it's very you good can very see good it right there in the comic <laughs> you watch him do it there's a panel I, and everything i'm ma actually angry that i have to do this cast because i want to to read it right now so i'm going to be getting that as soon as this is over please uh, uh you know order it from your local comic book uh, store. local comics or we will do that eric powell he did the goon oh my and, yeah uh hillbilly and Jimmy changa and spooky he, uh, he has albatross uh funny books is his publishing company we're gonna That's get on great. that i'm gonna get on that so let's get into eisner award oh my god an eisner award. you are hobnobbing with an eisner nerd yes and i am on a Critics' Choice Award winning at least. I think maybe we might have won an Emmy once. Uh, oh, my God. Sure. Uh, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Let's one get of my, this out of the way. One of my favorite shows of all time. I adore it. Uh, it's one of the few shows I don't binge watch. I actually watch one episode at a time because I want, I'd want it to last forever. Pretty much uh, the writing, the acting, the art, everything in that is just fantastic. You guys, it's um, getting more and more beautiful every year. It gets gorgeous. It gets, and it's still on. It's incredible. What a run it's had. It's amazing. Have you watched the new season? The new season's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I think I've watched the first two episodes. Like I say, got to spread this out. Got to savor it because I'm yeah. always afraid it's going to be canceled at the end of every show because it's. Shows that are on that long tend to get canceled, but it keeps on, Damn. keeps on plugging. FX is where it's at, man. They're great. Let's get into, first of all, what made you pick Audrey 2 as your monster? Uh, man, where do I even begin? Uh, it, it, it's probably, Little Shop of Horrors is probably my favorite movie musical. Uh, it, it ships around every okay. once in a while, but then I, it, but it's always in the top three and I, when I just sort of rewatched it to bone up for this, I was like, oh, you know what? It really is kind of my favorite movie musical. Mm -hmm. um, it's a brilliant story. It's uh, the the monster. It's a Faust story. So it's a it's a Satan from outer space. <laughs> uh, this plant that comes and gives this loser every uh, speak about a loser, giving a loser everything he ever wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, but he you know, he's also kind of dumb. And so he he starts doing horrible things but that's the whole plant scheme and you know it's a monkey's paw uh yep. type thing where you just uh you get what you want but there's a cost and uh the performance of levi stubbs as audrey too uh -huh. uh, is brilliant uh the 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 film itself uh directed by frank oz uh and so yep. it's all puppetry. All the effects are practical. There's no zero, green screen from like 1986. No or whatever. green screen at all. It's all None. real practical. Well, there's, a, there's a couple of green screeny scenes. Okay. Especially if you go with the original ending, which we'll talk about in a minute. All right. Um, but uh, 
it, like it, zero effects when it came to the plant. Like it would they it was all puppetry. Even there's one scene where like it grows. It's at the end of like grow for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like the plant actually grows and you see it expand. And it's not it's like camera tricks and a little bit of like I, I don't know how they did it, but it's a practical effect. The thing gets larger on screen because of a camera. Yeah, uh, it it's just mwah. all the and it's so like there are gags that are puppetry gags. I'm a huge puppet nerd, mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, th there's just like <laughs> he calls Audrey Audrey two the Audrey two calls Audrey one. This is toward <laughs> the end of the thing on a payphone, and then she's like, "Oh my god!" and she hangs up the phone, and then his little vines hang up the phone, and then they check. This is a time, <laughs> like people today won't understand what a okay. payphone was like but there was a little change slot and his little one of his little things goes, tendrils goes in there and it looks for spare change and it doesn't get any it like gives a little it's brilliant it's just like it takes these moments of pure brilliance and it's uh, the music is amazing mm -hmm. it's uh ash and Mencken who yep. you know found their huge fame with uh what, little mermaid i think was their big first disney oh monster okay hit. Uh, and then they did, uh, and they did the, uh, and Beauty and the Beast. So let's go and over then, a little, little bit of the history of this for everybody who may not know. Because you, you watch this, if your first exposure to it is the movie itself, you're like, how, many, how, many, how much drugs were these guys doing to come up with this? It's nuts. First, it was a black and white Roger Corman movie in 1960. Oh yeah, from the, from the 60s. From the 60s. Then in 1982, it was a musical on Broadway by Alan Menken and Howard Ashman, as you mentioned. Then four years later, a 1986 movie starring Rick Moranis, Steve Martin, and a whole bunch of other people. That's kind of a, that's kind of a crazy thing. But this all, I think what really took off was the live puppet work of the monster on Broadway. Did you ever right. get a chance to see this like live? Off Broadway, and it was Marty Robinson, uh, who is a longtime uh, Muppeteer. He he uh, is a Snuffleupagus oh, wow. and a Telly <laughs> monster on Sesame Street, and has been for decades and decades. So he was the guy that like did the original uh, puppetry for uh, Audrey Two when it was off Broadway, and uh, it, it, it like the puppet work in it is a. And yeah. you just if you just marvel at just the work of that and in the final scene when it's Audrey 2 gets huge it's like 60 puppeteers had to work mm. on that thing to make it to make it go and you know they hid them all it's brilliant it's just so good I'm seeing if people have any questions in the chat room here hold on oh copy got a weird weird way to do this let's get into this now yeah, right the movie made it was 25 million dollars to make in, mm -hmm. in in that's in 1986. That is 62 million in today's dollars. A pretty decent budget movie, not a giant yeah. blockbuster temple, but pretty pretty expensive. The box office was 39 million, which is 97.3 million in today's dollars. So it was pretty successful, as you said. It was directed by puppeteer Frank Oz of the Muppet Show fame, of Star yeah, Wars fame. And, yeah, just yeah, uh, an incredible. Yoda, is he still is he still with us or did he? Oh, fuck yeah, man, he's still rocking it. Sweet. He was Yoda. He did the Yoda puppet in uh, <laughs> the Last Jedi. That is pretty great. So now. You already knew he's this great, did not use any green Twitter. screen effects. You should follow Frank Oz on Twitter. If oh, you guys are he's on Twitter? I, I will have to do that. So let me he's ask awesome. you this. If you had Audrey 2, if Audrey 2 was your plant, would you feed people to it? <laughs> I mean, no. no. <clears throat> oh, boy. This is, this is a very... Uh, I wouldn't do it out of a greed. <laughs> like I would go more Dexter with okay. this, right? Yeah. You go more like, all right, Audrey, too. We gotta hatch us a scheme here, <laughs> uh, but but you gotta get to that point, right? So like, how do you? I mean, no, I guess not. What if they were very I guess bad I people? Be the hero. What if they were very very bad people, and you had a chance to That's get rid of I them? That's what I mean. That's yeah. the whole Dexter angle. Yeah, you like he's a guy that kills serial killers, and so it's like you know, if you could take it out the the. But then you, everybody's then who are you to decide who the person is that is not good? You know what I mean? So like, uh, well, that's yeah, because it's... you're a good person. I think that you are wondering whether you have the rights to kill people for being bad. But you're not. But, you're not killing them. Audrey's but, killing them. But the thing about Audrey too is that it, it it woos you with the <laughs> you know the temptation of like I can give you anything you want, right? Like, hey, you want fame? You want money? Yeah. What do you want? How can I make your whole situation better? And all you got to do is take care of me and feed me, feed me 
some unlikable characters. Yep. And that's it. Just get but rid of it. Ultimately, <clears throat> and this is where we get into the, the actual director's cut, mm -hmm. the Oz cut, if you will, the Snyder cut. <laughs> Such an old idea, you guys. You all think this is so new and fancy, but no. the Oz cut. So the, the movie we got in 1986 was delightful. Mm -hmm. And of course, I mean, if when, once you watch the, the song uh, Somewhere That's Green, sung by Audrey, uh, Ellen Green, who uh, like played Audrey off, off Broadway and okay. off Broadway, uh, the original actress, which is very rare to put in a film in the musical version, mm -hmm. uh, but she knocks it out of the park. Uh, it, once you watch that song, you're just like, oh, my God, I want them to succeed so bad. I want Audrey to have this. They are so great. And Seymour is in way over the fuck his head and he can't <laughs> deal with it. And he's just I want them to succeed. And they made the original ending which we'll get to in a second. Okay. Test audiences were like, we hate this movie. <laughs> and so they're like, all right, we'll, we'll make a cutesy one. Well, so, let's, they, uh... so they had the, the they had the couple win and to live happily ever after. But then there's a baby in their garden. Yeah. Like, maybe it'll no, go. Things can go the bad. The original ending is Audrey dies. Yep. Uh, he, he does it pri Well, he does pry her out, but it's too late. She dies in his arms. She sings a reprise of somewhere that's green, but she wants him to feed her to the plant so that they can then live together and he can be famous and do all the things uh, he does. It's amazing. The scene is amazing. There's so much puppetry that happens in like the cut 20 minutes. Uh, and ultimately, an army of uh, Audrey twos destroy cities around the world. <laughs> and there is like 10 minutes of awesome kaiju, oh all practical kaiju action of these giant plants destroying cities. I will admit I've never care. seen, I've never seen that, but that must it's be available on the Amazon prime On the Amazon prime. I'll do that. All right, quick if question. You'd like to see the Oz cut quick question from the chat room. Uh, Tracy asks, how many years have you been doing voice work? I mean, that's hard to say. Uh, I mean, you know, just as an actor, you're always doing voice work. But sure. As, as far as talking into a microphone for money, uh, <laughs> uh, turn of the century, I guess. <laughs> It started in the nineteen, the late 1900s. Late 1900s. We were all talking on soup cans Last. with string, and everybody loved Last. it. It's the way it was going. Now, yeah. I, I bet I have some info. I don't know how much of a devotee you are of this, but I... First of all, can I just commend you for reading my Wikipedia page? Yes. My intro. Very I looked, brave. I looked for a bio. I don't I'm know like, who this wrote will that. do. I, this will do just... The, <laughs> but it is, it is correct. I don't know where... I, I honestly don't know how it happened, but... Do you have a website of your own? I looked, I could no. not find one. No. So there you go. So you, we have to scavenge at the scavenge at the you scraps of scavenge. Wikipedia. Got scavenge. Everywhere. Apparently, I'm trans where you are. I'm transposing letters all over the place these days. Do you know the genus and species of Audrey too? There, she, there isn't one. Uh, there, there's not. You know, in the Corman film, it is uh, uh, like Seymour creates her. It really oh. is a sort of Frankenstein story. Okay. That then it eats. It doesn't eat everybody either. It like eats a Seymour. He's got a mother in it. <laughs> the, the the Corman film is brilliant. It's uh, it's uh, the Nicholson's first film. Oh, that's uh, right. That's right. Okay, his couldn't, first film I, role. Who then? The, that's the Bill Murray part. Yeah. Uh, in the musical is uh, oh him in the dentist Nicholson's office is incredible. Original. And he he is the sadist. It's brilliant. It's so good. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, the the plant is a Frankenstein, and it eats Seymour and Bushnick, and I don't know a couple others. And it, but Audrey lives, and it's. I will let you know, sir. I found mm. in my research that from carnivorousplantresource.com, an actual website made by actual people and or plants, mm. it is the genus species name is Spadium pararop. Prayer Reptor, sorry, Prayer Reptor, hailing from Kepler 186F in the Plantae Kingdom in the Milky Way Galaxy. Oh. Spadium Prayer Reptor. <laughs> they, they created a backstory for her. <laughs> Commonly referred this to as Audrey II, Tui, or Mean Green Mother from Outer Space, is the only plant within its species. And then they actually have a little bit of an explanation of the life cycle. The trap of Audrey II leverages a unique combination of luring, ensnaring, and digesting mechanisms to feed its insatiable hunger. Audrey II deploys promises. It promises that, if you care for it, People will like you, a type of psychological lure for the timid gardener. It ensnares victims in a tangled web of highly evolved tendrils and lies. 
but mostly lies. Ladies and gentlemen, again, that is carnivorousplantresource.com. You can look up carnivorous plants there. Uh, uh, it's yeah, awesome. It's brilliant. That is a brilliant. <laughs> I love that somebody did that and that it, it's so perfect and, and thorough and it, like exactly. Okay, yes. I did yes, it. then. Didn't I get a chance to look at the Rust site? It may just be an Audrey 2 fan site. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm kind of responsible. I don't care. I don't care. It's brilliantly <laughs> written, and I love it. And because it is. It's like we know that it came from outer space. We know that it zapped those things. That's yep. the other thing about the uh, the the original ending that the, the other ending cut. Like, because it, the, it starts with the the greek chorus it's tra it's a tragedy first of all it's mm -hmm. not supposed to be a comedy it's a tragedy <clears throat> and so the greek chorus the three uh, ladies who you know sing their our way through the film uh th they come out and they say the thing everything that you just saw here has been happening all across the country mm -hmm. like it's not just this story this has gone on and and it's created a fervor and people are buying these things like no there's no tomorrow and so it's this whole consumerism thing and then it's you know the plants just go on and well let's and be it honest if they, cities, if there, it's so good if there was a plant that would talk to you i would sell an enormous no enormous number of units i would buy one i, I mean like they <laughs> They, have you seen the uh, Harley Quinn? It's brilliant. The Harley Quinn cartoon on HBO Max? Not yet. Uh, with Kelly Cuoco or whatever her last oh, name is. Oh, Kelly Cuoco? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, she plays Harley and uh, Lake Bell is uh, Ivy, Poison Ivy. And it. it's re it's great. It's a hmm. Batman comedy, a, ba a comedy set in the Batman universe that you're like, I don't want one of those. But then you watch it and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> everybody needs one of these like well. it's so good it's such a good story and everybody but anyway jb smooth plays oh no a talking plant that is essentially an audrey too it's okay. just like it, poison ivy has this plant <laughs> and it's jb smooth as an audrey too essentially i can't remember what it's called the but. the chat room agrees with you that apparently is very popular a question from the chat room rob otto mm. would like to ask if you and the rest of the cast felt archer would be hit right away or if you were surprised by its success. Oh, I think everyone is still <laughs> shocked. <laughs> I don't think the surprise <laughs> has worn off. Every time they're like, man, this, I mean, it's the best and it's a great show. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, next week's episode, I'm telling you, I've, I've watched it in advance uh, and it is probably one of the best episodes of Archer I've ever seen oh great uh, and i've seen all of them well yes. um it, it's just amazing uh and 1206 remember 1206 because <laughs> i want 1206 to get an emmy for something okay uh if 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 we get picked up and keep going it'll be because of 1206 <laughs> i don't know and uh, uh people it's really great so anyway it's a great and so but it's you know holy crap how awesome is that? Yes. And that's not, now it's, it's 10 years, right? Is that correct? 12. 12. This is the 12th Jeez season oh Pete's. that's currently showing Jeez on the television oh Pete's. boxes and your computer screen. <laughs> and for, for an actor of any stripe to have that kind of consistent work for that long, Especially that's got to be. <laughs> bozo like me. Like, I'm just here doing, doing grunt work on stage, doing comedy, you know, for. <laughs> pennies <laughs> Put pennies on the dollar no so it's been it's been amazing let's let's workshop let's workshop here if All you right. and i were in charge of little shop of horrors the sequel oh yeah oh, you know what i just thought of that as i was watching the final cut I, yeah the, the director's cut i was like oh man this is ripe for a sequel yeah. because you just have survivors of this world you create a whole <laughs> new universe of you know characters and the world has been taken over by the audrey twos and it's I don't know the, the love story. You, you try to do a tragedy again and where it's like you go beneath the planet of the ape style. Where it's like the love, the, the couple has to ex blow up the earth to stop them, the plants from going to more. I don't know. First of all, we got, we got to make I the plants more. I'm not a writer. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. Lester of the Lesser Gods. Lesser, Lesser, Lesser it Gods. At your local hey, we got that right on the shop. screen. I think you got to make, you got to make the Audrey's. Uh, mobile. They got to be able to pursue. They prey. are at the. End. That's, that's the right. Thing. That's, that's the right. Thing at the end, the original. They're everywhere. They got. He busts out and he's got like legs now. He just. They just need to get so big to mm -hmm. become completely mobile. 
Well, uh, Len, hopefully we it's can the get best. we it's can the best. get the Audreys to best fight each movie other. Movie monster, I defy anyone. <laughs> to, at least it's the coolest one. And I read up a little bit that um, name a cooler that, might... movie monster. I dare you, Chat. <laughs> you mentioned Lyle Conway, who worked on with Jim Henson and the Muppet Workshop, worked with Frank Oz. He designed uh, the characters for Henson Productions, such as The Muppet Show, The Great Muppet Caper, The Dark Crystal. With Audrey too. he created his masterpiece, a massive 13-foot-high puppet made of rubber and Kevlar that's as lifelike as any of the flesh and blood actors in the film. And I have to admit... I was surprised looking this up to be like, there's no CGI in this some bitch whatsoever. Oh, there, was, there was no such thing as CGI in 1986. It was, when was the last Starfighter? So they though? were probably shooting it in 84. Yeah, probably. I mean, the last Starfighter was in the 80s, but that was all that was like vector. Yeah, flat planes and, and stuff, stuff like that. That was the crude. Crude. But to, when you, if you can go back, if you guys haven't rewatched all puppetry. this, you watch it and. It's a it's a goddamn rubber plant in effect, yeah. and yeah. they absolutely it's bring it to life. It's never not a puppet. It's always a puppet. So it's they bring it to life with, with cajoling and with anger and with excitement and with bloodthirsty rage. It, it they sings do songs and duets. <laughs> like, it's insane. Like the lip sync on it, it has m lip movement that yep. is mind blowing. And when you think, oh, they're doing that with like people doing this and and somebody with a bunch of cables and just trying to get the thing to look right and yeah. like a nightmare scenario like you can't imagine it's, it's a work of art product is so good the craftsmanship that went into that film is so amazing that just the sets everything you know it could pre green screen and blue screen like everything is for real in yeah it. and and it's just it's all shot on this one you know you know the corner by the end of the film of skid row and it's just mm -hmm. Oh, it's gorgeous to look at. It's the music is fucking it's great. amazing. It's great. The cast is you'll not find a better, funnier cast. Uh Jesus, Steve Martin as <laughs> He's it's in his absolutely in dentist. his heyday too. Yeah, just so so great. And the cast is top uh, yeah. to bottom. Have you ever worked uh on a puppet that requires more than one person to manage? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, of what course. is the most yeah, you that, most I you've mean, been on? Uh, where? What is your biggest I mean, puppet like, gangbang, so to speak? I've never any of those gigantic super cable puppets, but I've done like Boon Raku shows and stuff where there, you have like at least three people on a puppet. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, and on a little, uh, I've never done any like gigantic. Three people on a puppet, that's still a lot. That still takes it's a lot of coordination. Raku, which is a, a Japanese uh, style of puppetry, traditional Japanese puppetry. There's mm -hmm. three. Uh, there's one person that is doing the head and i believe the right hand there's one person that is only doing the left hand and then i think there's one person that's doing the legs mm -hmm. yes but you're i mean and you're and a puppet that's like i don't know 18 to 24 inches maybe like not a big thing and you've got three adult humans trying to cram around this from thing. the chat room uh somebody rob asked did i just ask lucky yates if he had a puppet threesome no i asked lucky yates if he was in a puppet orgy those are very very different very different hmm. things once you get past yeah. three people audrey too that is a puppet they're orgy that orgies, is a technical term by the way <laughs> they're called orgies question from the chat room do you speak any foreign languages mm. no I was going to answer that for you. I'm like, he's from Michigan. That's not something that we had there ever. So, um, from the D people. <laughs> I mean, there are languages galore going on oh, sure. out there. But you just don't speak any. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they're saying. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll get my message across somehow. So, and it uh, seemed to work out. And Lucky has a prior engagement. We're going to start getting him ready to go to that. But you, you love oh, yeah, the. Yeah, that's all right. I got, yeah, I got, got a few minutes. Uh, I got Sweet. Like 15, I got like 15. I got Great. about 15 minutes to kill. Uh, but yeah, I have, to go do, I have to go do an improv show. Luckily, I live right around the corner from my theater. And te and where? what other things are you doing right now that people can watch you at? Of course, Archer, is that the only online thing? Or are there things people could log on and see what kind of work you're up to? I, with that I'm up to now, uh, Archer, uh, I mean, if you're catching the Alton Brown live tour, Alton Brown from the Food Network okay. uh, is going on tour. And uh, I don't I was a, a character on Good Eats for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's a pre-show video with a bunch of the old Good Eats characters. So I'm in that. Lovely. I don't know. That you have to go to a theater and sit there and watch Alton sing songs and make 
something crazy and giant on stage. Can it's he feed, show, does he though. feed everyone in the theater when he does that? No, oh, but he come does on. like he he's done a few tours and he'll make a gigantic like fills a stage, some sort of contraption. I think in this one, they're making a giant air fryer and they're going to fry like oh, 30 that's pounds right. of wings or something. Holy cats. Like in front of the audience uh, out of hair dryers. <laughs> He's going to make an air fryer out of hair dryers. Air fryer out of hair dryers. Yeah. Uh, and all right, let's 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 get back. To, let's talk about Audrey too. Um, yeah, let's not talk about Alton Brown. Although... We could talk about him on this monster of the week because he is a monster. He is a monster. He could get fed to Audrey, too, because he's got to be delicious with all that delicious food he makes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. Like, and, yeah, you know, you are what you eat, right? And that guy's got to be chock full of deliciousness because <laughs> I have seen his diet. A science minded guy like that would like to go out in a very scientific way. He uh, samples everything. I will say going out to lunch or dinner with that guy is the best because they just keep bringing shit that he or I never ordered. Because <laughs> the chefs try, all want to impress him. Try, try it's this. The, it's the best. All right, we got a question from the chat room Do you miss Comic Cons? Uh, a, a asks, do you miss Comic Cons? She misses Phil reintroducing, reintroducing the two of you every year because you both have weird names. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, yes. I, I mean, I, I miss certain things about Comic Con. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, after again, like well, I've only been so going any of them since like the fifth season or whatever. But uh, you sort of it, it, it it's very much the same pattern every year. Like you you do sort of the same interviews on interview day with the same outfit. Sure, many a time with the very same reporters year after year <laughs> after year. We have like friendly relationships with reporters for various online outfits because I've seen you 10 for 10 years now. Um, so like that, it's like that part's work, right? So you got to go and work. The panel is always fun mm -hmm. uh, just because we go out there and fuck around. Yeah. Uh, and of course the Prady party, I do miss Prady's the Prady party. party. Uh, like that's, that's always the highlight. That's the, that's the one thing I really truly look forward to. And also seeing the cast and hanging out yeah. because we get to see each other so intriguing. Now, you guys, people in the chat may not know this. Do you, you guys do not record in the same place together. Is that correct? No. Yeah. You all record correct. separately? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I go into a booth and I read the Krieger lines. Do you get, are you, are you fed the prompts from other actors or are you just read them uh, straight? Yeah, I, the director and producer, uh, it's made here in Atlanta anyway, mm -hmm. so they're my buddies <laughs> that work on the show. And they're just on the other side of the glass, you know, giving me direction and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And if, if there is a very conversational scene that they just really want to clip along, uh, you know, Casey Willis, our executive producer, will just read along, read the scene along with me so that. You know, he does a trick. like he's having a conversation and he's also I mean, Casey's directing the, the vocal work. So he knows how sort of he wants these things to play so out. Fun. So he's a good person to feed lines. Yes. Uh, but it, yeah, it's all uh, I'm in and out, especially Krieger. Like he's just uh, <laughs> he's the uh, he's the ranch dressing of the show. Yeah, he's it's, a berserker. You it's save not a him, salad. You save him. No, no, he shows up. Question. Yeah. This is an important question for the youths. Uh, Daz71 on Twitch says, uh, my daughter's school is putting on a little shop of horrors for a school production. Looking forward to see how they create Audrey too. Now, here's the question to you, experienced actor person. Yeah. What advice do you have for the children putting on this show? What acting advice do you have for them? What acting advice or yes. what puppetry advice? They're very, two very let's, different Let's do a little, of let's advice. do one of each. One of each. Uh, the acting advice is, uh, uh, know your lines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, support your other actors uh, and hopefully your other actors are out there supporting you okay. and uh, you know uh, believe everything uh, that you're saying you say every uh, when you're delivering your lines just pretend you're having a conversation with somebody and those are the words that you're thinking up and that weren't written on a page and you have puppetry uh, advice puppetry advice is uh, guys keep going uh, we're an awesome, awesome little subculture in show business, but uh, puppetry is very cool. But also, it never doesn't hurt. It always hurts. It will hurt for the rest of your life. It's a lot of fun, and people love it if you got a good thing going on with yes. a puppet. 
but it always, it always hurts. Always, always hurts. Uh, Puppetry da- is pain. Daz, yeah. my advice is from a scientific perspective, uh, Audrey 2 is our carnivorous plant. Blood makes the Audrey grow. Kill, kill, kill. Tell that to your child. That will work out very well. <laughs> Sean Dyer wants That's to true. know. <laughs> That's true. Beware of strange plants that offer you. Uh, yeah. Offer to enrich your life. They offer you candy or plant fertilizer. Just say no. Sean Dyer wants plants to know. are there to serve us. That's We're correct. Not there to serve we them. We eat them. We eat them. What we, is. Hey. Who are the primates here? We are. Sean wants to know, what is your guilty pleasure comfort movie? Oh, man. Oh, that's really a mood thing. That's, I mean, oh, boy. That, ah. I need genres. I need, it's such, I live such a fluid life of, like, uh, my favorites, they come and go. Yeah, I'll give a list of some some rattle, rattle off a that couple. I will never turn off. Okay, uh, the Blues Brothers uh, is mm-hmm. great. Uh, let's go down movie musical lane because a lot of them are sort of comfort food for me. Uh, uh, oddly enough, uh, I think it's 1968. Oliver. <laughs> The movie Oliver, <laughs> I think, is just it's the whole Dickensian thing. The music is also really great, but uh, the whole soul, uh, good. Give me a good Dickensian, sure. Uh, uh, you know, shit life yes. story, and I'm in. Uh, there's also a really great uh, Christmas. My favorite Christmas movie, my Christmas comfort food, is Scrooge with Albert oh. Finney, which I consider to be the best telling of uh, a Christmas Carol. Yes, I. I- Cannot argue with you there. That is and wonderful. And he was like 28 when he did it, and you would swear to God he was like a 78 year old <laughs> gross old man. He's so brilliant in it. Back off, big guy. That might work with the ladies, but it won't work on me. That is just a classic. <laughs> uh, Rob asks, "Can you have Lucky say bit a bit a bit again?" That was awesome. I'm not following. What, what did he wants. I say? I don't know. He says did he say bit a bit a bit like Twicky from <laughs> Buck Rogers. Bit a bit a bit a bit a bit a book. I don't know about that robot. Nobody Look. wants nobody wants a robot with a penis shaped head walking around a starship in any capacity. And carrying around a little round doctor around his neck. <laughs> Hello, uh, Maria from the chat room. We have now offended the chat room. Maria D'Souza from the chat room. No, the thing before. Everybody's fine with a penis shaped robot. They don't care. What they care about is are you forgetting about the Muppet Christmas Carol? Is your favorite Christmas movie? No, I'm not forgetting about oh. it at all. <laughs> you you uh, hate this not, movie. Not you hate the Muppets. <laughs> I don't hate it. It's fine for what it is. It's fine. It's fine. But it's not Scrooge. It's, fine. it's you know, it's post. It's the uh, Jim's dead. It's they, you know, they, they lost the magic after that guy yeah. died. Like there there's a definite not that I'm a big Muppets take Manhattan fan, because I'm like, what's going like, come on. Uh, but this is this is I don't know what this is. So like, you're trying to appeal to the Broadway crowd? Is that what we're doing? Like, what, who are we talking to here with this schmaltz? This will anger some in the room, but I also am not a fan of any of the Muppet movies. I like the Muppet <laughs> show, condensed, small, vignettes. Put that into a two-hour narrative. Great Muppet Caper with Charles Grodin as oh, the yeah. villain is really, you should revisit it. Okay. It's Fucking hilarious. John Cleese has an amazing scene with Miss Piggy in it. Mm-hmm. It is a, a very, very funny film. Uh, Kermit and Fozzie play identical twins and nobody can tell them apart. They're reporters. <laughs> it's really brilliant. It, it, they don't, you know, they're like, they show a picture of like their father and it's like a mix of both of them. It's so good. It's so I goddamn funny. Admit I've forgotten Give all it about another that. Shot. Give that one uh, that, like okay. uh, the rest of them I can tell. I, I mean I can see totally see your point. But, but the that... great Muppet Caper with Charles Grodin. <laughs> Charles Grodin. In- <laughs> in- in- incredible. Also that might be another good movie to watch height. Here's a question. Oh my god, yes. Little 100%. Shop of Horrors. As is Little Shop of Horrors. If they've way. never seen it before, should they watch it? Sober the first time, drunk the first time, or high the first time? If you watch, okay, if you watch the 
1986 theatrical release version, the, mm -hmm. the typical version. Uh, you can watch it any way you like. Uh, uh, watching that movie sober uh, is just fun because it really is, by the end, it's a great musical. It's just a great musical. The, okay. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can appreciate it on any level. Uh, drunk, probably, uh, you know, it's a great, yeah, if... You guys want to sit around and sing songs and shit like that if that's your sort of uh group then yes 100 percent uh, i don't know unless you're really getting into it why you would really want to party around it <laughs> i though uh <laughs> is a whole different story and definitely you want to watch the uh frank oz cut while you're high because it it is a tragedy everybody fucking dies at the end the plants win but god Damn, like all of the puppetry and the kaiju shit and everything is extraordinary. And I sh it's like 20 minutes of it. Like it's so it just much. Goes on. Like they're wrecking elevated subway trains and buildings <laughs> and they're climbing on the Statue of Liberty. It's so fucking great. The army's oh shooting God. at them and shit. Like it goes crazy places. It's great. Can you imagine so, shooting all of that and then having them get cut and that then out? And having them go like, guess what? We can't. We're, yeah, people I, People just want them to be together at the end. Like that is not, that's never oh. been in this story. The Corman one, it wasn't in that story. The uh, off-Broadway, off-off, then off-Broadway, then uh, movies. It it's never clear. has been, they get together. It's no, the plant it's always wins. There. Question it's from the chat room movie. from uh, A, do you have a dream role you would like to do puppets or acting or both? Sorry, I had to uh, get my inhaler. It's okay. Um, uh, do I have <coughs> do I have a dream <laughs> role? Uh, mm, boy, I mean, Krieger kind of is a yeah. dream role. Uh, the dungeon master became a dream role. Uh, you know, any role can be your dream role. I, although I will say that Krieger, like, if they had given me the script first and told me I could play anybody in it, I would have picked Krieger in a heartbeat. Like from pop culture, like could be it, anything. You know, I I really uh, not to say anything, uh, uh, take anything away from Seth Green, who is always I think brilliant, mm -hmm. uh, but I really would have loved to take a crack at uh, Howard the Duck. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know what, like man, uh, for a hot second, my buddy uh, Dave Willis, who did Aqua Teen and uh, uh, Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell and everything, he was doing a, a Howard the Duck cartoon uh, mm. in this whole new, you know, what if is like the only thing that made it through all that. They were gonna do a bunch of animated series. Uh, and I was really, I, I wanted to be Dr. Bong so bad. <laughs> uh, but what are you gonna do? The whole thing went away. Now let's get back to the kaiju part of Audrey too. The yes, cut please. footage. I do love the kaiju monster. With the resurgence. It's very of, tough not to choose Godzilla. Yeah, well, it's very tough. But speaking of Godzilla, with the resurgence of Godzilla and Kong and these new movies, although mm -hmm. Godzilla's fighting instincts are a little bit suspicious, doesn't First want to of finish all, Shin a job. Godzilla is the only Godzilla movie that anybody should be watching. Okay. It is perfect, and I think it's amazing. <laughs> Uh, fight between Kaiju Audrey 2 and Shin Godzilla, which... Okay, uh, oof. Uh, you, you gotta get... Uh, yeah. if, if Shin Godzilla is all the way full, the end, the, the final form where face is splitting apart and gigantic... Uh, because uh, the, the Kaiju Audrey 2's really got as big as sort of like original 1950 whatever it was godzilla what was mm -hmm. it 56 when was that first one happened well, let's see, anyway, 1942, uh, I, like mm -hmm. if you took that godzilla versus audrey 2 audrey 2 all the way okay 100 percent would kill it. shin godzilla uh, you you gotta get the shin godzilla in one of the first two forms uh either the hilarious weird slug thing mm -hmm. that is so beautiful that there is a puppet version of for the Godzilla YouTube channel uh, oh, has a little puppet show uh, segment uh, <laughs> called uh, uh, Go Go Gojira, I think. 
Okay. Uh, anyway, there's a bunch of different. There's one where it's uh, Godzilla on Monster Island raising both Minya, his kid from the earliest ones, and then the Godzilla two from like the ones from the eighties and nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just them being stupid. And then there's another one where it's the fucking larval, gross form of Shin Godzilla, who, and it's this amazing, really gross puppet. He, he always happens on to a women who are having trouble with their life, and they end up accepting this horrible thing into into their heart, and then their life improves. It's really <laughs> fucking weird. Anyway, Audrey 2, before Godzilla is in its final form, but if... If. There are many Audrey twos that are only as big as the buildings and all mm-hmm. that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. If there, if there are enough of them, they could eventually well, take it. it. But they are, you know, they're extremely flammable. So you have to think Godzilla's got some they kind are. of an that's edge what there. They, they need numbers. They need yes. their strength in numbers. They right? gotta, but they that's gotta. their whole plan anyway, is that to, to, to reproduce and keep growing more of them. That, God damn it. You have to watch the final one. You have to watch the actual <laughs> Oz version. It I'm is, sure I've watched it. I can't remember. I mean, but like, yeah. If you're talking about monster movies, it's a true monster movie. Because okay. it, the monster fucking wins, right? Like, yes. It, it kills everything. There's also the, the most brilliant. I'm so bummed this never made it to a theater. I, they actually did do a, a, a release of it. But at the very, very end, like you're seeing all this thing. And Audrey, too, it comes bursting through the theater screen oh and there's a projection so it looks like it's in like if it, with today's 3d technology it would be uh, the greatest thing ever it'd be pretty anyway, sweet i'll stop yeah <laughs> i really should uh, hit it though i gotta you got i it. gotta go do it you got show. it uh thank you very much for being on the show luckily Stop that was in. super I, fun I'm sorry i rambled so much that's the point of the show is to let okay, the guest good. ramble so yeah, we're totally really fine. talking thank you right, chat dude. feed Go Lions and uh, everybody in the chat room says thank you very much. All, All right, right, bud. Later. See you, buddy. Have a good show. All right. And I am still back to guest. Back to Maine. There we are. Hello. Turn that off. You see, I'm still working on the whole flow of the show. And then I think this is the eighth one possible. We've done quite a bit it. Quite a bit of this Monster of the Week. This has been super fun. Let's go over real quick our upcoming guests again. We have got, next Friday, actor Bronson Pinchot, Balky himself, the voice of Aliens Phalanx, is going to be talking about the Wicked Witch of the West. I think that's going to be a pretty unpredictable show. I have no idea which way Bronson's going to go with that. Uh, we, then we've got Grammar Girl. Magnet's going to be on a week after that. We still have to give her a monster. We have to give her a monster. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any ideas, throw it in the chat room. Something that a grammar-oriented person would like in a monster. And Michael Grace, go Lions. And then on October 8th, we've got Bonnie Burton. She's been talking about killer clowns from outer space. I know Rob Otto is going to be there for that one. Probably everybody who is of my high school age. What a crazy, crazy effing movie that is. It's bonkers. I can't wait. I'm going to have to rewatch it, which is tough because the clowns freak me out more than a little bit. Don't like the girl clowns. Don't like the boy clowns. Don't like any of those clowns. I hate clowns. I'm terrified of clowns, you guys. I do not like clowns, and now I have to go watch a clown horror movie. And then on October 15th, our pal Mallory O'Meara is going to be talking about The Creature from the Black Lagoon. She wrote the book on The Creature from the Black Lagoon, so she should really know what the hell is going on. That is it for this week. I will be wearing a lion's hat on Monday night, watching Monday Night Football, as the Packers probably do horrible things to my lions and feed them to their household plants, but we will do the best that we can. That is it for this episode. We will see you next week with Bronson Show to talk about the Wicked Witch of the West and uh, have a very monstery weekend. Good day.